Now, when it comes to settlement mods, this is one mod that gets overlooked a lot more than it should. This mod adds new automated doors, including a door closer, door sensor, a keypad panel, an emergency lockdown mechanism, and a proximity sensor. Each has a unique effect in the game and will take effect once placed in close proximity to a door. The door closing mechanism does exactly what you'd think and closes that door after a brief time of being opened. Now every door will be shut like that mystery room at the military base that says do not enter. Hey, I wonder what's in here. You're free, T-Run! Yeah! So now it will look like your settlers actually care about their houses and shit because the doors will be shut rather than being left wide open for any mole rat to just strut in and f*** your wife while she's sleeping. God damn it, not again! Now the door sensor is pretty sweet, it's basically like one of those automated doors at the grocery store that opens when you get close enough to them and then when you walk far enough away they close behind you. The keycard panels are also really cool because you can lock areas of your settlements that are only accessible in theory to people with those keycards. So you've got yellow for those caution zones, red for those restricted zones, and then blue for blue zones I guess. The emergency lockdown mechanism is a big metal device that's supposed to be used on gates that require power and will close and lock when the power is off and open when it's on. The proximity sensor works like an automatic switch. It turns on when hostile or all NPCs are in range and turns off when they are not. So it's really good at keeping out unsavory characters. I rate this mod one kid with a really big bike helmet. Safety first, guys! Have you ever just wanted to abduct somebody in real life? I know I have. I can't even imagine the mischief I'd get into if I owned my own flying saucer, but sadly I don't. Well, in real life, when you want to actually abduct somebody, there's a lot of red tape you have to deal with, like learning how to persuade someone into your creepy van, or avoiding snoopy neighbors like that one kid with the giant binoculars. Yeah, I see you looking at me there, Billy. All right, you pervert. Well, this mod, unlike real life, gives you all the fun parts of abducting someone without all the hassle. What more can you ask for? This mod allows you to subdue, abduct, and control encountered NPCs. The NPCs that are supported are gunners, raiders, settlers, mutants, dogs, and some assaultrons. Once you abduct them, you can either put them to work in your settlement, or you can have them follow you around like a bodyguard. Now, in order for this mod to work properly, you're first going to have to craft the abduction holotape at the chemistry station. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. You're thinking, oh no, more instructions. I just want to abduct people already. But instructions are important, people, okay? The last thing you want is to be rubbing chloroform on someone's face, only to remember that you left your ski mask at home. Those are amateur moves that'll get you pinched by the popo. Next thing you want to do is you want to use that holotape and click the start system. Then once it resets, you'll have to go back in and click to add a perk. Once the perk is added, you'll be able to start abducting people. Yay. Just approach an NPC and aim at him or her and you'll be able to abduct them. Just like this. No, don't shoot. I'll do anything. Anything you say, huh? Well, I want you to suck on my wiener. Wait, what? It even puts a collar on their neck, which you can trigger in your pit boy to blow their head off. So run is not really in the cards, you feel me? After you kill someone, you can resurrect them and bring them back to life. Be careful though, because sometimes all the king's horses and all the king's men can't put Mercy Long's head back together again. And instead of Marcy, you'll get this. <laughs> This is another hidden gem on the Nexus that seems to be overlooked. This is a great mod that adds to the game's dynamic and gives your character immersive tools to use during your playthrough. I'd highly recommend checking this mod out as it's a lot of fun to use. I rate this mod one guy who thinks he's an ostrich. I feel safe in here. I feel like my head is protected and so my entire body's protected. Now we've all been there, you know, bouncing around the commonwealth, blasting my alert babies right in their undeveloped faces, while the queen is off in a dusty shack somewhere, gobbling on some freak's knob with her gooey face. And oftentimes, when you're in that moment of bliss, just obliterating slug baby after slug baby after slug baby, it may just occur to you that even though you're spending ludicrous amounts of ammunition on these defenseless freaks, there isn't any smoke coming out of the barrel of your gun, even though there would have been a carbon buildup in the barrel, which is likely to occur after shooting so many rounds. Now that little bit of smoke wisping out of the end of the barrel can be the difference between realism and unrealism when it comes to killing massive amounts of my alert babies. <laughs> like unhealthy amounts, <laughs> you know? Now this mod sorts that and adds smoke to the end of ballistic weapons after they've been fired. 
Smoke is just one of those additional touches that really contributes to the sense of realism in the game. Every type of weapon has its own type of smoke emitted, and only ballistic weapons emit smoke. This additional smoke makes for some really interesting images and gives you the impression that you're in a living, breathing world. Now once the smoke comes out of the barrel, it's carried off by the wind to dissipate into nothingness. Some weapons will emit more smoke than others, and at certain times of day, you'll be able to see the smoke better than at other times. Now this is a great little mod that adds a beautiful new element to all the ballistic weapons and makes them feel that much more realistic in the game. I rate this mod that moment you realize that life is full of surprises. Oh, hey, look at that. Looks like a harmless, bright yellow- HOLY F***, IT'S ITTY LAND! OH MY GOD, OH MY GOD, OH MY GOD! Have you ever woke up screaming covered in piss and shame thinking, boy, I wish there was an easy mod configuration screen to adjust my mods in Fallout 4. Well, tuck your balls into your butt cheeks because now there is. Don't actually tuck your balls into your butt cheeks though. I don't know why I said that. Honestly, that doesn't sound fun at all. That sounds painful and unpleasant. I just wanted you guys to be as excited as me. And I think I took it too far with the ball tucking. Now the mod configuration menu is a settings page for mods for easy, convenient mod manipulation and accessibility. It provides a central location for mod configuration, which is accessible via the pause menu. Now you'll be able to configure more aspects of your favorite mods than you ever could before. The MCM provides a range of controls such as checkboxes, steppers, drop down sliders, buttons, text, and key binds. Oh my! It's basically a Word document's wet dream. Oh yeah, look at that f***ing MCM. That was me pretending to be a Word document looking at the MCM. This mod does require Fallout 4 script extender to work properly. However, it's one of those fixes that just makes modding the game a whole lot more fun and engaging. Now, if you plan on modding Fallout 4 on the PC, then this is definitely a must-have mod. I rate this mod one mistake that was played off like it was done on purpose. Oh, this isn't the deep part of the ocean. In case anyone was curious. Now there's one thing that separates service dogs from normal nobody dogs, and that's a snazzy vest. Vests say, hey, I'm qualified to do extra shit, like police work and move safety cones around and stuff. Not just any dog can get a vest either. You need special training. So if you get your seeing eye dog at an ordinary pet store, then chances are you're going to get hit by a fucking bus. Okay? That dog doesn't know shit. This mod adds a sweet safety vest to the game, aka a harness for dog meat in Fallout 4. This vest is more than just a vest though. It's modular body armor with brand new meshes and textures, designed after modern day military and police canine unit harnesses. Featuring craftable side pouches, backpack, ballistic weave, faction patches, and various colors and patterns. Yeah, it's amazing. Now you can customize it, give it different colors and factions. You don't really dip your toes in those aesthetics. Now all those sexy cosmetics are a real treat, but they also double down on the immersion in the game as well. As before this mod, you could store a bunch of items and dog meat, but he doesn't have any pockets or whatnot, right? Which led me to believe you were shoving those items up at Doggy's asshole, which wouldn't be right. It wouldn't be, okay? Also wouldn't be immersive considering the amount of things that I stored up there. I mean, that asshole can only contain so much, all right? Gonna, can't pull a bazooka out of a doggy ass, can you? No, you can't. It's rhetorical. But not anymore. No. Now dog meat is equipped to store items as you'll have a sweet doggy harness with little doggy pockets. It's fucking amazing. And it also makes him more qualified. Look at that vest, all right? He's way more qualified now. I rate this mod that feeling you get when you try to stand up and walk after your legs fall asleep sitting on the toilet. I had a dream it would end like this. Now the atmosphere in Fallout 4 is desolate, gunky, and lacking any real vibrant colors. Needless to say, the Commonwealth wouldn't be a prized destination on The Price is Right. Now you might not be able to make Fallout 4 look like a fairy tale wonderland, but you can powder its titties a little with this mod installed. This mod will change the water in Fallout 4 from a slimy green to crystal clear or tropical blue. Now there are actually four variants to choose from. There is clean, clear, crystal, and my favorite, tropical. Which in my opinion, will really liven things up. A mod like this is sure to almost completely change the atmosphere in the game. Now, instead of feeling alone and desperate for some radiation-free food, this place will feel happier and make you want to bust out a Mai Tai by the pool. Maybe even invite over some local scuzz for a game of cribbage. Needless to say, this mod will give your game some much-needed style in terms of the water in the game. This mod is like boob implants for your Fallout game. Yeah, she might not need those double D balloon titties. 
But boy, are they neat. Just like this mod. This water is now boob neat, okay? And here's a fun fact. Makeovers aren't always a good thing. For instance, there seems to be a stigma around men getting makeovers or plastic surgery. But yet when ladies do it, it's no big deal. Like for instance, when a lady at my work got her lips done, everyone was like complimenting her and saying, oh my God, they look amazing. Yet I get my nipples attached to my face and everyone freaks out like I'm some sort of psycho. But what do they know, man? I'm just trying to express myself. Anyways, I rate this mod one dog that just got hit by a golf ball. Ah, what the f Start Me Up is a mod that provides an alternate start, quick start, or normal start options for your character depending on what kind of mood you're in at the time. When you use one of the alternate start paths, there are over 800 dialogue edits with voice and lip sync, so your character is no longer the mother or father of Sean, or even a vault dweller for that matter. Now you won't have to run around smelling like 200 year old freezer burn and people will finally respect you in the commonwealth. This is definitely a must have mod for role playing individuals. This mod provides a menu at the beginning of the game after the bathroom scene with three distinct options. Alternate start is an option where you will wake up from this dream as a different person, not the parent of Sean. However, you can still be a pre-war vault dweller starting in Vault 111, but it will follow the alternate plotline where you are released from the vault by mistake. And at the terminal, you'll be able to select your own special stats and up to 20 traits, which in case you were wondering, is one more than 19. Yes, I did that math in my face. <laughs> you, you peasants, you can't do math like me. Now you can also start as a wastelander outside of the vault and select your own special stats. Up to 20 traits, one of 38 different occupations including factions which will affect your starting gear. One of 38 different locations, how much or how little starting gear you have, your starting level and you'll also have the option to just randomize any or all of the above if you just want to roll the dice and see what happens. Wouldn't recommend that though. That's how you end up in a career you might regret. Like the war boy who has to soap up Immortal Joe's nipples before they put on his plastic shoulder pads. You don't forget that kind of sh**, trust me, okay? Wink wink, nudge nudge. Now quick start just allows you to wake up from your memory in your pod in Vault 111. This follows the normal plotline but you will skip all the pre-war stuff and get to playing right away. At the terminal you'll be able to select your own special stats and again up to 20 traits. Which, in case you were wondering, is one less than 21. I know some of you guys were like, I don't know, but it is. Okay, trust me on this. Trust me on this. Also, there is a normal start, which is basically just what you think it is. This allows you to keep the mod installed, but start the game the way you normally would without the mod installed. It's basically like a no thanks, not right now button, which is nice. Now, this mod is absolutely essential for anyone who likes to roleplay in Fallout 4. I rate this mod one baby making out with its own reflection. Let's face it, bouncing around the post-apocalypse isn't the wet dream weekend the Fallout series would have you believe it is. The vanilla game just has you sauntering about in a skin-tight vault suit just grabbing on your d and balls every time you change directions. Now let's face it, the real world post-apocalypse wouldn't be so accommodating to skinny jeans and a metrosexual haircut. In a real apocalypse, you would be carrying pretty much everything you own on your person at any given time. Also, you would likely want to have an assortment of equipment on your person for any number of precarious situations you might encounter in this incredibly dangerous environment. And that vault suit just doesn't have an adequate amount of storage space or pockets for that matter. Well, this mod author did an incredible job creating an armor mod that encompasses these essentials and really gives a realistic depiction of a sole survivor in the Fallout world. This outfit has a giant backpack with all the necessities one might need to set up camp and store supplies as they wander this toxic wasteland. It also comes with a survivalist gas mask, which really sells the whole HOLY F THE WORLD'S GONE TITS UP vibe, you know, Fallout's going for, which is great. This is by far one of the best, most immersive and realistic armor mods ever made for Fallout 4. Now, if you want to acquire this mod, then you can just craft it at the chemistry station under El Cazador. This entire armor mod has been made from scratch with all its own custom meshes and textures based on the concept art by James Flaxman. It has a ton of separate parts, so you can really mix and match until you find something that really giggles your giblets. From armor to backpacks, hoodies, a wicked coat, and other accessories to choose from, this armor mod has just got it all. This is an absolutely incredible addition to the game, and one that's sure to improve anyone's playthrough of Fallout 4.
I rate this mod one photo of when things just aren't going your way. Fucking hate Mondays. This mod adds a highly customizable suit of ODST armor from the Halo series to Fallout 4, featuring a wide array of cosmetic and gameplay changing modifications to suit anyone's needs. Unless, of course, you got some real sicko needs, okay? This is just an armor mod. You can't, like, butter your butt cheeks or jerk off a giraffe or anything weird like that, okay? You know, like normal Fallout 4 needs. Now, the ODST battle dress uniform is the signature piece of equipment used by the Orbital Drop Shock Troopers. Now, this armor provides numerous advantages in the field, including ballistic protection, temperature control, as well as thermal insulation against extreme temperatures experienced during atmospheric re-entry or entry, and thermal protection from energy weapons. Yeah, so it's just got all the bells and whistles. Along with an extensive list of customization options from skins to powerful attachments to protect yourself or tear apart your enemy's bum cracks. This mod has got it all. It has three suits of armor, four helmets, HUD overlays, vision colors, skins, attachments, night vision, and so much more. Now, if you want to acquire this armor, it can be crafted at the ODST Hollow Bench, which is a new type of workbench that will be in your workshop menu once this mod has been installed. There is also a variant of these armors that can be found in the world space under the castle if you want to go poking around. Now, whether you're a Halo fan or not, there is definitely a lot to love about this armor mod. This mod adds multiple variants of the Halo armor with tons of options and customizations to choose from. You can really create something unique with this armor mod. Now, I really love the addition of the robotic arm. I find it really brings this armor together and gives it a life all its own, completely unique from anything else I've seen on the Nexus. There's just something about a robotic arm protruding from a spacesuit that just gets the ladies all damp in their dunkaroos. I rate this mod that moment when your drunk friend tries to tell you a secret. Cool secret, guy. Uh, I think I'm pregnant. Let's face it, finding a legendary weapon or armor piece in Fallout is always a real treat. However, there are some disadvantages to legendaries in Fallout 4. Like for instance, let's say you find a weapon with a wicked legendary, but it's on a poopy weapon or armor. It's like getting clothing for Christmas. You get all excited because it's in a big box, only to find out it's a sweater. Like, what the f***, Grandma? This mod changes that, though, and lets you put legendary effects on your favorite weapons or armors in the game. Now, there is an immersive version where you still have to find the legendary weapons or armor with the desired effect, and then you can actually switch them to other weapons and armor. And there's also a game-breaking variation of this mod where you can just legendary up any weapon or armor with any effects all willy-nilly, which is kind of cool. Now, this is definitely the type of mod that's sure to change the way you play Fallout 4, making your favorite weapons that much more formidable in the game. You're never, ever going to waste a legendary effect ever again. I rate this mod that moment when you're doing something super private and someone opens the door and surprises you. Ah! What is it? This mod adds a new scrum diddly umptious HUD and interface to the game. Now the HUD or heads up display as the kids are calling it nowadays refers to the main game interface while adventuring. The HUD elements include the health bar, the action point, the criticals, the experience bar, and enemy health meters, compass, dialogue, and messages. Now this mod allows customization of all those elements. All elements can be moved, rotated, and resized. Now all this customization is sure to make anyone want to whistle Dixie, or Dick a Whistle, or Whistle a Dick. I don't know. <laughs> I just don't know anymore. I don't know. I don't know what that phrase is or means. So I'm going to use it however I want. Now some of the elements also have some customization options, like you can actually hide parts of the element. Like for instance, is that health bar cramp in your style? Then you can just go ahead and lock it in the basement like you did your adopted son Derek in his weird rock collection. There is also optional features to show scrap components beneath items when looting. This feature requires either the included scrap tag files or a similar file from your sorting mod. Now the def inventory modifies the interface for containers, barter, and pit boy inventory screens with numerous improvements. Container and barter screens have been increased in size to fill the screen for ease of use. Now before this mod, the inventory was a f disaster. But after this mod, it was so nice, I just wanted to put on my Big Bird outfit and pull my ass cheeks apart. Sorry, that was completely unrelated. <laughs> That's embarrassing. Um, <laughs> um, I don't own a Big Bird costume, by the way. That's weird that I would mention that. Um, I don't do those things. I don't I don't dress up like Big Bird and pull my butt cheeks apart. That's metaphorical. I use it as an example. 
However, in order to really get full use out of this mod, you're also going to need to install a sorting mod, like for instance the previous mod on this list, as all of the remaining features require a sorting mod. Now with the use of a sorting mod, sorting tags can be replaced with icons in all three screens. New tabs are available in container and barter screens to limit what is displayed by category based on tags. Additional tabs have also been added to the Pip-Boy to move notes and holotapes to their own tabs based on tags. And Pip-Boy items can be rolled up in a single entry based on tags. Now DefUI overhauls the menu tab and makes it a lot more organized and easy on the eyes. It basically takes that ugly duckling and it hits it right in the face with a shovel and replaces that super dead ugly duck with a much more alive attractive duck. Look at that. Isn't that great? Look at it. Super, super alive. Now when you're going through your inventory, you can find, sell, trade, or drop items with ease in comparison to the vanilla game. Def UI is for winners, and you definitely want to be a winner, don't you? So go on, join the party, get in, the water's fine, it's nice and warm, it's pee warm. I rate this mod that moment you realize why your plane ticket was so cheap. Alright everybody, here we go, hold on! Hey, here's something I've never noticed when I was throwing shit in the real world. A giant green arc that conveniently lets me know where my projectile's gonna land. Do you know why I haven't noticed such a thing? Well, it's simple, really. It's because that doesn't exist! Well, in Fallout 4, if you level up your character enough and upgrade your projectiles, then you'll get yourself a green throwing arc that will show up when you throw a projectile to let you know exactly where that dusty d tickler is gonna land. Now the worst part about this throwing arc is that once you've enabled it, there's no going back. You're not able to abort this giant immersion breaking baby and no amounts of controlled flushing or wide toilet seats will ever get rid of it either. It's with you forever, there's just no going back. At least not without a little help from the modding community that is. Think of the modding community as an abandoned park where you can just leave unwanted throwing arc babies to be adopted by wolves or eaten by other abandoned cannibalistic toddlers. You know, that's what happens in parks, right? This mod does exactly that and removes that unrealistic eyesore from your screen even when you leveled up your character to that point. Now I know there's probably a few of you out there that think, hey wait, the throwing arc could be immersive though, baiters, uh, because of the pit boy, right? <laughs> well to that, I say F you! I will fucking kill you! How dare you question me during a mod review! Remember back when I said I was gonna kill you? Uh, I might have overreacted. I'm willing to take a couple steps back here and uh, fully examine myself. No, but seriously though, the pit boy is a cop out and the throwing arc is bullshit that just continues to remind the player that you're actually in a video game rather than immersing you in the environment. This mod might be a small fix, but it's essential if you want to get a realistic playthrough of the game. I rate this mod one bear that just cares. Safety first, guys! Or Smokey the Bear will fucking find you! The AI in Fallout 4 definitely leaves something to be desired in the fact that they're the world's most oblivious lookouts. There are times when you'll be sneaking like right in front of them and they'll just look out into the distance and be like, Is somebody there? Hello? Somebody there? Hello? I feel like it's a game of hide and seek with like a four year old where you're pretending you don't see their feet behind the couch when in retrospect they fucking suck at hiding. You know, just giggling and shit when you get close. It's embarrassing. Well, imagine just for a second that you couldn't find that giggling toddler. Then you would know just for a moment what it's like to be one of the vanilla NPCs in Fallout 4. This mod overhauls the AI, the stealth, the fall damage, the damage in general, the compass, Molotovs, and grenade throwing delays in the game. Now there are a variety of gameplay tweaks that this mod makes available to choose from, so you can play the way you want to play the game. This mod will give you better AI combat so that the enemies will now think and act more like real world enemies would. It reduces grenade spam so enemies just won't chuck shit at you every two seconds with their infinite supply of throwables. It increases grenade detection distance and survival difficulty damage. There is now better and more realistic fall damage as well as increased stealth detect distance meaning enemies will now be able to detect you much more realistically in the game. For instance, if you walk in front of them crouched, they'll f***ing see you. Instead of missing you, like they don't have any goddamn eyeballs. There is also now a longer stealth search time, so enemies will look for you longer, which makes a lot of sense. If you think about it, if someone was keeping a lookout and they heard a noise, then they probably wouldn't just shuffle around for 30 seconds and then say, Oh, I guess it was nothing. I better just go back to standing here with my vital organs fully exposed and my back to danger. 
there are also some other gameplay tweaks like increased walk speed decreased reload speed reduced compass radar detection no automatic condition regeneration molotov cocktails burn people to death instead of exploding people to death and so much more this completely changes the way you approach enemies in fallout 4 and makes interactions with enemies much more believable and immersive this is definitely an important mod for anyone who wants to get the most out of combat and npc interactions in fallout 4. Alright, this mod, one cat that's positive that these balloons are gonna blow its f***ing head off. Now, do you like mindless, seemingly endless ambiguity and vagueness where you never know where or what your character stands for and every action is a roll of hypothetical dice? Well, I don't, and so that's why this mod is an excellent addition to the game. Normally, more words is a real deal breaker for me. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm like anyone else. I love to curl up late at night with a great book and just color until my fingers hurt. More often than not, I just feel like words, they take away from my favorite Disney characters. But not this time, no siree. This is one of those rare circumstances where more words is a good thing. Sometimes when you don't have enough words, it can be really confusing. It can be really upsetting, okay? For instance, just think about an online dating profile pic that just says, I like kids in all capital letters. That's not enough words. It's not enough information. There's not enough, you need more words. You need more information, okay? Maybe that person really likes kids in an innocuous way, or maybe that person is a kidnapper, okay? Who knows? All I know is that person really likes kids. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I like to know what my character is going to say before he or she says it. Fallout 4's dialogue interface was so simplistic, you didn't really know what to think. Literally, you had no idea what your character was going to say until he or she said it. And there's nothing worse than miscommunication. A full dialogue interface aims to fix that issue by giving the full line of dialogue in the interface for you to read prior to telling Preston Garvey you want him to tell you about every settlement and danger regardless of what's going on in your world at the time. Now this is a simple fix, but it makes a huge difference in the game, letting you interact with the AI more precisely and more reflective of your perspective at the time. This is definitely an essential mod for Fallout 4. I rate this mod one guy pretending to be a doctor. All right, get over here. Let me take a quick look at your brain. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just what I thought. You were insane in the brain. Mm-hmm, I could see it here. All you need to do to fix this is take two scoops of ice cream and tape your ass cheeks together and you'll be good as new. Wow, this game has zero problems, said no Fallout 4 player ever. Bethesda games are riddled with glitches and errors and all sorts of other shenanigans that makes my brain hurt. Now some are minor issues that will just take you out of your immersive playthrough. Like an NPC floating around like Peter Pan on Molly. Just blast it off with happy horny thoughts. Other problems are bigger though, and cause even the vanilla game to be unplayable in certain ways with game crashes and end game errors. And although Bethesda does try to ameliorate these issues, it seems like every time they fix one, a new one pops up and punches me right in the penis. So mod authors took it on themselves to fix, modify, and tweak the game to create a much smoother and less buggy experience. Less clipping, less glitches, and less crashes. The unofficial Fallout 4 patch isn't just an important mod, it's a must-have in that it fixes issues that were never addressed by Bethesda. If you want the most out of Fallout 4, and even if you're not into modding, this is still one mod that you're gonna want in your game. The unofficial patch does so much it's impossible to list all in one mod review, but all the changes from the minor to the major are all done to make Fallout 4 more enjoyable, more efficient, and even a more believable experience overall. I read this mod that moment when you regret getting the cheap seats on a plane. Please kill me. Now one of the things that drives me nutty professor about the vanilla version of Fallout 4 is the world map. It's this very simplistic version of the world space that gives as little detail as possible, making figuring out where the f*** you're going a real cause for concern in the game. There has been more than a few times where I'm just bouncing around the world space and I look at my map and I think, where in the slippery titties are the roads right now? Like, how do I get from point A to point B without falling off a fucking cliff or into a dusty crevice somewhere? Because that would be useful information right there. Yes, it would. This mod completely reworks the world map in Fallout 4 and really fluffs up its whole situation. It's like Julia Roberts now in Pretty Woman after she meets Richard Gere and gets a financial makeover. And like Julia Roberts, this map doesn't kiss on the mouth. It's just not that kind of prostitute. It'll lick your balls, but kissing is just too intimate, you know? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> It'll lick your... Ah. Uh, 
prices. This world map adds all the roads, train tracks, topography, and more to the vanilla map. It also has distinct water lines, correct placements of map markers, balanced brightness for the glowing sea, numbered grid lines, and numbered regions. It's just the bee's knees of map mods in Fallout 4, and it honestly makes me so happy I peed a little the first time I had it in my game. Yeah. This is a great mod that will improve anyone's playthrough of Fallout 4. I rate this mod one bird that I'm pretty sure wants to murder me. Hey buddy, would you want to come over and maybe see my super safe knife collection? Now Fallen 4 is a post-apocalyptic wasteland, yet you can walk around letting your hair down, free to blow in the irradiated breeze like a nuclear war didn't even happen. It like never even was. It just seems strange to me that the air would be safe to ingest all up in your gullet with no safety precautions at all. If you want to walk around in nothing but ladies underwear, like you're 12 beers deep on spring break, well then guess what? Nothing bad's gonna happen. Have at her. Well, this mod attempts to ameliorate that discrepancy in the game by making the environment unhabitually toxic. Now you'll have to wear gas masks around to protect from radiation exposure. Leaving your domicile now without the proper protective gear will get you a lethal dose of radiation to the face. The wasteland is now as serious as losing somebody's pet. I should know, just last week I lost my friend's pet when I was looking after it. So I did what anyone would do in that situation, and I went around the neighborhood posting photos of my friend's pet with a number for people to contact me. The good news is that I got a bunch of phone calls. The bad news is apparently you're not supposed to call a human baby a pet. Anyways, in order to survive in the wasteland now, you'll also have to constantly change the filters in the mass to make sure you're up to safety standards, or else you'll die, like, really, really fast. Now, this mod has its own custom sounds and animations that really immerse you in the world space. This mod is sure to not only change the way you play the game, but also the way you see the game. Before this mod, Fallout 4 was a pretty chill environment, with the odd death claw here and there to keep you on your toes. But with this mod installed, exploration becomes a task in and of itself. Even just making it to Diamond City at the first of the game can prove challenging with this mod installed. This is one of the best mods that I've seen for Fallout 4, and it's an excellent addition to anyone's playthrough of the game. I rate this mod the face you make when the bartender doesn't think you're legal drinking age. Hey, I have an idea. How about when they go to modify their weapons and armor, we put a vision obscuring bright green overglow around the object in question so they have no f***ing clue what they are modifying or what the modification will look like when they add it to the weapon or armor. How did an idea like that even make it into the final game, you're probably wondering. Well, I imagine it went something like this. What are you, f***ing drunk? That's the best idea I ever heard. Next, why don't we make the player character randomly shoot laser beams from his belly button and hire a guy to go around and punch everyone playing our game right in the nuts? Who let Vikram in the idea circle again? What do you mean Todd Howard already gave it a green light? Are you f***ing with me, Mark? Is this real life right now? This mod allows you to disable that hard-coded vision-beating shader effect at various workbenches so you'll actually see what you're crafting. This might seem like a small fix, but it has a huge impact in the game, as most of us spend tons of time upgrading weapons and armor at the workbenches. I mean, there's nothing more aggravating than using materials just to see what an attachment will look like on a weapon or armor. Then having to close out a one screen just to see it on the gun or armor and then go back in to remove or change it and then rinse and repeat this asinine process over and over and over and over again until you have something that will make your father finally love you on the inside. Well, now with this mod installed, you won't have to worry about any of those shenanigans as this mod will finally f***ing sort you out and make the workshop menu function more practically in the game. It will make modifying weapons and armor a breeze and save you material, time, and frustration. It's a win-win-win-win-win and a definitely must-have mod. I rate this mod one guy who thinks he's a sandwich. Someone eat me quick before I get old and soggy. Now, I don't know if you guys are like me or not, but uh, when I get in a firefight in Fallout 4, I like to keep track of how many rounds I let off. Then, when all the commotion dies down and the smoke is cleared, I like to just go around counting the shell casings, just to make sure they adequately represent the number of shots that I fired. And if there's even one less shell casing than shot fired, then I start uh, freaking out, man! I uh, throw sh I uh, yell obscenities at the TV. I write a strongly worded letter to Bethesda detailing how upset I am with words and snapshots of my butthole. Okay? But no, no. 
Not any longer. Now, with this mod installed, the shell casings will much more adequately represent the number of shots fired, as now shell casings will not disappear after only a few seconds. Now they'll stick around much, much longer, and really clutter up your whole situation. I mean, just look at all the shells on the ground here. Honestly, it's a fucking mess, but it's an immersive and very realistic mess. The type of mess that just gets my titties all moist and sweaty because it's just so damn realistic, you know? I could just take off all my clothes right now, right down to my skivvies, and just roll around in these shell casings. Ooh, ooh, shit! They're still hot! Ah, oh, a couple of the warm ones just burnt my cheeks. This is a great mod that in a lot of ways is a must-have mod in anyone's playthrough of the game, especially if you want realism in Fallout 4. I rate this mod one photo of when something touches your foot from under the bed. Holy f***, it's got me! It's got me! This is it! This is how I die! No, no, wait, false alarm. It's just a cheesy. This mod rebuilds the Vis and, when needed, pre-combined data. Now, Vis data does the same thing as occlusion planes and should not be needed. But, if precombines and vis data do not fix something, occlusion planes will be used in future areas. So if you're like me and have no idea what any of those f***ing words mean, then don't fret, as I didn't have the faintest idea. Not the faintest. But what I do know is that with this mod installed, the game will load better and improve the frames per second. Even in the most frame-intensive places, like just outside of Diamond City, or other cluster f**ks that normally shit on your frame rate. This mod will increase performance by about 10 to 20 frames better than in the vanilla game. And apparently some people even see improvements as high as 50 to 60 frames in some areas. But if your game is only getting 10 frames per second, then maybe it's time to stop playing Fallout on a goddamn Atari, because what the f**k? So basically speaking, this mod just makes it so the game files are more efficient, so the game doesn't have a fucking aneurysm when it tries to load up the game files. Apparently Bethesda just threw the files all over the place like they're used condoms at Ron Jeremy's house. I'm just kidding. We all know Ron Jeremy doesn't use condoms. This mod just cleans it all up and makes it all nice and neat, meaning the game can load faster and be more efficient. Now this mod will only improve your game and doesn't seem to conflict with other mods, so really it's a no-brainer and a very important addition if you want to improve performance in Fallout 4. I rate this mod that moment when you ask your friend to smile naturally and they look like they just shit themselves. Now this mod is simple but complex all in the same sentence. It's simple in that it adds a very simple type of new dynamic to the game, which is campsites, but it's complex in that it adds a ton of new features, as well as gameplay mechanics that you can now do in the game. This is a lightweight camping mod that adds craftable, carryable tents, sleeping bags, dog beds, fires, lanterns, and cooking pots, each with their own dynamic sounds and interactivity. Now this mod is basic enough that you can install it and use it within the first few minutes, easy peasy, penis squeezy. But it's also detailed enough to really make you feel much more immersed and involved with the world space. Now all of the new items that have been added can be crafted at the Armorsmith Workbench or the Chemistry Station if you don't have Armor and Keywords Community Resource installed. Now all the items will be labeled as Camping Kit in your inventory, so they'll be easy to identify when you're all tuckered out and want to set up camp for the night. This mod is incredibly realistic in that you can now camp pretty much anywhere in the Commonwealth, which makes a lot of sense because the Fallout universe is probably lacking in the B&B department. You know? Now the attention to detail in this mod is astounding and in many ways blows my mind that this type of mod wasn't in the game to begin with. There are so many little details this mod is comprised of that not only make it amazing, but also would take forever to list everything in one video. Just for example, you can adjust the position of all the items in the camp. You can pack them up with ease, you can interact with them for cooking and sleeping, and the cherry on the immersion cake is that the f***ing fires will even go out after a few hours in the game. There is so much to love about this mod, especially if you're into a survivalist playthrough of the game, or if you just really want to immerse yourself in realism as you play through Fallout 4. I honestly can't say enough good things about this mod, as it's just done so well, and really, it's a must-have mod for Fallout 4. I rate this mod the moment you're pretty sure your dog has a serious problem. Did has uh, somebody see ball? Now I like the heads up display as much as the next girl, but let's face it, sometimes I just want to run around hudless with my dick just flapping in the wind. You know? Yeah. You like that? You like that, Susan? Yeah. You like it when I jog by, don't ya? 
What do you mean you're calling the cops? Okay, all right, cool. I respect that. However, without the HUD, it's easy to get lost and not know what the f*** is happening in the game. So it seems like it would be idealicious if the HUD was only around when it was needed, right? Wrong! Just kidding, that was right. I don't know why I told you it was wrong. That was, that was excessive, and I'm sorry. I was hurt, uh, okay? I wasn't held enough as a 34-year-old. I'm only 31, but I'm assuming in the next three years, I'm not going to get held nearly as much as I need to be. So that's why I'm so upset. I'm sorry. I lashed out. The aim of the immersive HUD is to provide the immersive feel you get from having no heads-up display whilst keeping the usefulness of actually having a heads-up display. It takes the permanently visible HUD elements such as the compass and crosshair and hides them when they are not needed or unlikely to be used. Then once you need them, they'll just spring into action. This can be done a number of ways in game. For instance, when your health goes below a certain level, the health meter will display on the screen. Also, you can have it set up that your compass only shows on screen when you aim down the sights of your gun. So now you can focus on the beauty and splendor of the decaying world space when you're traveling the commonwealth without having a little meter with an indicator point ruining your immersive adventure hard on. All of these items are customizable in the game so you can change elements to fit your playstyle. You can get yourself a super immersive HUD that has elements that only appear when you absolutely need them or you can have HUD elements that show up like all the time. You be the judge and adjust it to your particular playstyle. Now this is an excellent mod that can completely change the way you experience Fallout 4. This is definitely an essential mod for anyone's playthrough of the game. I rate this mod one person who's terrible at parallel parking. Nailed it! Now this mod groups like items together and works best with Death UI. It also sorts the most commonly used items near the top for easy accessibility. It also modularizes the options to give you the ability to customize which items to sort. Let's face it, before this mod, the inventory screen was a cluster of confusion, especially if you had more than one item. Going through 500 keys to listen to a holo tape is just un unacceptable. However, with this mod installed, it will group like-minded items together, as well as label certain items to make inventory management that much easier. Now, I don't know about you guys, but when I'm in my inventory, I don't want to just be bumbling around like a fucking buffoon just to find a nice balaclava for chasing joggers. No, no, I need to know where my face concealing items are at all fucking times. Now, I've been in a police lineup and it's not fun, especially when you're still covered in blood, but I digress. The different categories include aid, which uh, sorts your cams, devices, drinks, food, liquor, addictive cams, nuka, pre-war food, raw food, and syringer ammo. Ammo, which sorts your ammo and fuel into groupings. Armor, which requires armor and keywords community resources and use dynamic naming rules, therefore will stay sorted after modifying at a crafting bench. Explosives, which sorts all the explosives in the game, such as grenades, mines, signals, into groupings. Junk, which sorts different types of junk into groupings, such as resources, scrap, and tools. Miscellaneous, which sorts things like currency, lockpicks, unique items, bottles, collectibles, crafting, holotapes, hacks, notes, passwords, bobbleheads, quest items, trash, keys, and more. And also weapons, which again requires armor and keywords community resources to work properly, but will organize weapons into specific groupings. This is definitely an essential mod for Fallout 4, and it keeps everything really organized in the game. I rate this mod one unlikely superhero named Wheelman. He just rolls down hills. He's got no skills. He's not the hero we need it, but he's the one we deserve. Ghouls are a big part of any playthrough of Fallout, as they are one of the most common enemies you'll come across while traversing the world space. So how they look cosmetically can really set the tone for this post-apocalyptic wasteland. I don't know about you guys, but I thought the ghouls in Fallout 4 were butt cheeks compared to the ghouls in New Vegas in Fallout 3. The previous Fallout ghouls just look like more of a threat, you know? I just feel like the ghouls in Fallout 4 look all bloated and lazy. Like, yeah, they'll chase you, but not if there's something good on TV. Well, this mod author changed all that by revamping the ghouls in Fallout 4 to look a lot more like the ghouls in Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas. The ghouls now look a lot more intimidating and set a much more serious tone when you encounter one in a dusty crevice somewhere. I just find these new ghouls give me chills right down to my man parts. More often than not, I play Fallout now with goosebumps on my ball bag. It's not weird, I've seen a doctor about it. Now the last time I can remember being this frightened 
was when a guy walked up to me out of nowhere and asked me to spot him while he worked out. Which would have been no big deal except we were 20 miles from the nearest gym. Also, he was sitting in a van when he asked me. So I guess he just thought I'd hop into his murder van to drive half a city away to spot him in my jeans. Okay, psycho. Nice try. Now that I think about it, actually, he might have been asking for directions. I was a little drunk at the time. Thinking back, throwing a live chicken at his van might have been a bit unnecessary. Live and learn, though. Live and learn. Anyways, this is a great mod that is both incredibly immersive and will completely change up your game. The ghouls look awesome with realistic meshes and textures. Now these might be the ghouls from previous Fallout games, but the mod author did a great job upgrading them aesthetically for Fallout 4. I rate this mod one guy trying to prove to everyone he can suck his own salami. I'm really close here, guys! Cheating is generally frowned upon in the real world. If you cheat on a math test, they might kick you out of school. You cheat in the Olympics, they might take the medal back. And if you cheat on your wife, you might get stabbed in your ball bag. Generally, cheating is a shitty thing to do, and in video games, cheating again is pretty uncool. However, cheating in Fallout 4 is the exception, as it can actually make the game more enjoyable. So although a cheat terminal might not be the best way to start the game, it's a great tool that comes in handy during those later playthroughs. Now how you play Fallout is going to change over time. At first you might not need this, but later on you might want it. You know, just like how people change over time. For instance, I used to wear a diaper and shit myself while I watched Blue's Clues. But that was yesterday. Today I'm watching Die Hard. Now let's say that you want to start a new playthrough, but not lose all the progress you had from your last playthrough that took you 900 hours of in-game grinding. Well, with cheats, you can start fresh and keep the progress. You can also mod the game to fit your particular playstyle, making Fallout 4 that much more enjoyable. So, although cheating is bad, it's not only acceptable behavior in Fallout, it's also recommended at times. Now, this is a great mod that will definitely change the way you play the game. I rate this mod the face you make when you get your first direction. What is this? Thanks again for watching, folks. Hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, be sure to bitch slap that subscribe button like it's three weeks behind on your rent. <laughs> bitch! Where's the money, bitch? Where's the money? Where is it? Also, go ahead and hit that bell icon, too, because apparently YouTube thought there should be extra steps. Why not, right? I'd like to subscribe, but first I have to click this and this and do this. Oh, it needs an email. All right, and this. Okay, Just tell me when he's uploading. Once you do all that, if you're lucky, at the stroke of midnight, a tiny little average baiter's fairy might come and tickle your butthole. Now, I hope to see you all again next time, and remember to keep on average baiting, baby.